Okay, so I was really careful cutting out the exterior edges at the bottom of my creature and around the tusks and the mouth. But at the top, it's going to get covered by these flowers. But I still want to have an edge that I can erase back to if I need to behind those flowers. For one thing, I don't need the flowers to be 100% opaque. Flower petals can, can be somewhat translucent. And so it can be fun to play with their transparency as long as there's some anatomy behind them. So now I'm using one selection and, and I'm able to delete it from multiple layers. So that's nice. So remember, you can make a selection and then it can travel between different layers that you select. And here it's really soft. You see how I'm getting really jittery with my stylus to get a more dynamic edge. But because I'm not feathering at all, it's going to be nice and sharp. And the reason I'm doing that is it's always easier to soften an edge in the computer than it is to sharpen one. So you might as well start sharp like a diamond and then soften as you go. So you can always use a soft eraser to soften. Now, I'm not zooming in too much to get too much detail here because I know that the that helps me go faster and I know that the flowers are going to cover a lot of this up. But it is kind of fun cutting out the fur. And to be honest, I don't even really know what this fur is because I don't have an ear on the other side. So this might be all covered up anyway. And I definitely don't need all that green. All right, so now I can go to those flowers. And the problem with the flowers is that it's kind of too strong a singular element. So I want it to, to run along the spine and I can always go back to my sketch for reference, right? Though my composite has, was informed by my sketch, it ended up looking pretty differently, especially with the legs just based on the reference I found, and that's fine. But I like this idea of having a ridge, kind of like this, on the forehead, and I don't have that here. And I think that could be good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a duplicate, Command-J, of the orchid layer. Then I'm gonna move that duplicate and put it up on top of everything and see if I can get that little ridge I want by warping it. putting it on the forehead. Okay, so let's turn off the other orchid. Now I'm going to use lasso and I'm going to select the empty space around the orchid, and I'm going to do Select and Mask. And remember, it will remember my last selection, which is growing, shifting the edge, about 9% in, a radius of 5 pixels, and feathering at 4.2 pixels. I can say OK. You can see what that looks like. It just bites it in a little bit. And then I hit Delete and Delete and Delete, uh, however many times I want to get that edge. And then I realize, well, this doesn't work here. Let's get rid of all that. All of this is unneeded. And then instead of just deleting it, I'm going to try to dodge some of the midtones here. Um, you see, I'm going to, to get pretty bright right away. And I can dodge the shadows, brighten the shadows a little bit here. And then I can use 
the sponge tool, which is in with Dodge and Burn, to desaturate. Take away some of that excess. Like, I don't want the green, so let's get rid of the green. I'm pushing it more towards gray. Only in these selected spots. And then I can actually burn. Darken the midtones around the bottom here. Maybe even darken the highlights right here. So it kind of sits down a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to take that eraser that I've been using, slightly soft edged, and I'm going to cut it out. Cut out the parts that don't make sense. In terms of lighting, I want it to feel like a ridge. This sets up the flowers going back and along the body, the rest of the body. You can even use the eraser to kind of sharpen this back edge a little bit. This is the problem with using feather or using the refine edge tool is that it will make everything look really uniform. And organic life is pretty diverse, not very standardized. And its edges and textures. Just little hand touches make a big difference. Okay. Now I want to play with the. So I like that placement. Now I want to play with the um, color balance and the levels. So levels can push a little bit darker, and in some ways that helps, right? I can limit the highlights a little bit. Some ways that helps. I want it to be just kind of a generic light condition. I think that's all I need. And now I go to color balance. And I want to get away from the greens. Just a little bit more towards the reds. But at the same time, I don't want the white to lose its whiteness, right? I just don't want it to look like it's lit in a, a different environment than the rest of my creature. I'm going to put a little bit more red in the shadows. <coughs> Command Z, see if I like that. Yeah, it helps. And now there's certain parts of the internal edges of the flowers I don't like. But first, let's deal with the external edge. So this flower ridge, all the others look pretty good. Even the slight focus pull to them is nice. But there's that little blip of black there. Don't like, and then this is just a little too soft, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it with my eraser. Find the edge that I want to keep. And you're making the creature's edge that you're going to put into your landscape. So that outside shape is really, really important. Remember with our sketch, kind of the silhouette, right? Your silhouette should really describe your character as much as possible. Actually, with that in mind, I'm going to take this back layer, and I'm going to warp it a little bit, because I want to bring this back foot in a little before I make some final decisions. Feels a little bit more grounded. And I like that silhouette better. OK, now there's some internal problems with the flowers. Obviously, this stuff, I'm going to use my eraser, kind of go in. Oh, need to be on the right layer. Then. Use command. And I can erase that edge away. So the internal edges. And these are some obvious internal edges, all these whites. Now, because this is from one string of an orchid, everything is connected onto a stem. And I just made that stem the spine of my creature. That doesn't mean I need to keep every flower. And this one back here is just too large. It's obscuring too much. So I'm actually going to do a rough cut around it and maybe like invent 
uh, invents a different edge. Let's see. Yeah, I, mean, I like that a little bit better. I also have some internal edges here that aren't that useful. I can dodge and burn. In this case, I want to brighten. In this case, I want to brighten. Use a bigger brush, cover more ground. Remember, when you dodge and burn, use a low exposure. Never higher than 30%, and I usually stick to about half of 30. I like how the flower there almost doubles like a tail. This is how you can kind of change your lighting a little bit. Especially where the sun is hitting the spine, that can get pretty bright. As long as you just play with mid-tones, you're safe. Okay, so next, I'm going to use the sponge tool, nice and big, and take some of this really intense color down. And it can seem like it's making it darker, but really it's just desaturating. It's just moving it more towards gray. So when greens and yellows, when yellows get gray, and warmer colors, like oranges, uh, get gray, they appear darker, though they're not really darker. And then one last thing is I'm going to do some internal compositing the flowers. I'm going to take this petal, circle around it, command J so it's a duplicate on top, and move that internally back here, and then move it underneath, and then transform it and warp it so that it covers something that I want it to cover. And I can sponge it. And I can dodge it. And I can erase around it. And often you'll 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 use internal compositing for this project. You'll use like one wing to make two wings or one antler to make two antlers. Just make sure it's, it doesn't look what I call copy pasty. So that you transform and change the coloring and lighting enough on each. Now I can now take that, that petal, duplicate it again, and move it to other spots. Where I need coverage that I don't have. Like that. It's already cut out. And again, Command J, duplicate it, and put it in. This time, maybe flip it horizontally and rotate it. And maybe again. So, this is a lot like our shape exercise. Go back there, change its shape and size, rotate it, maybe even warp it down. We're inventing our own forms here. And then erase away from the layer on top of it to reveal it. So much you can do. Compositing is 
just a playground of 